Taiwan. As I said, it's a very complicated place. And uh, global trends like urbanization, internet, foreign travel, elections, uh, education, and so on are all uh, democratizing. Um, it's very tempting, um, a political scientists fall into this trap all the time, to predict the future based on mechanistic or deterministic theories. But there's no science of historical change. Marx, Mao, just wrong about that. Uh, let me give some examples of mechanistic theories. Uh, in the 18th century, uh, people talked about the balance of power. And nowadays, we think of it as a kind of self-correcting mechanism, a kind of homeostatic mechanism. Uh, it's like, you know, it gets too hot in the room, the air conditioner kicks on, brings it back uh, to a normal temperature. That's deterministic. Or uh, the power transition theory uh, uh, that Ambassador Koa alluded to. Uh, wars occur when one power overtakes another. Um, let me give, as an op uh, in opposition to this, some examples of theories that leave room for human choices. One is the balance of power theory as it was understood as a principle of diplomacy in the 18th century. Not that states would act in a certain way, but they should. If a power seemed to be getting too powerful, the smart thing to do uh, on the part of other countries would be to unite together to uh, constrain the growth of that power uh, for the sake of the independence of all, thereby preserving the international system. Um, recognizing that rel changes in relative power can be a source of uh, uh, Conflict leads us to think of ways of uh, dealing with it. Uh, as for example, when an unemployed housewife gets a job and starts earning more than her husband or has a higher status position, will there be war? Can hubby live in peace with a rising wifey? <laughs> Thomas uh, Hobbes discussed this question uh, and identified three motives that incline human beings uh, to war. Incline, but not determine. There are things we need to keep in mind in designing ways of resolving conflicts justly and peacefully. And these three motives are, first of all, scarcity, right? fear, and I don't know if you know what the third is. It's vanity or pride. Mm -hmm. So if you want peace, you must deal with these motives. Peaceful coexistence means a relationship between countries with major differences of ideology, religion, tradition, and government. Uh, and it means more than simply the absence of war. It means some kind of peace with rights, some kind of recognition on both sides that the other side has a right to exist. A reason for optimism about the future of China and the United States is that both countries are governed by elites that are prudent and responsible. They're sane. Reason for pessimism, either country could become irrational and irresponsible. It's easy to mobilize populations against foreign enemies when times are bad. Mischief makers stir up trouble. Ambassador Ko, in a speech last December, said the media loves a controversy. Trouble between China and the United States is always worth playing up. So my point is that there are circumstances in which the Hobbesian motives could cause popular passions to override elite prudence. Uh, scarcity, uh, energy scarcities, food, soaring food prices, uh, disappearing arable land, uh, population growth, the kinds of things that Jared Diamond in his wonderful book Collapse uh, described as having brought down Mayan civilization uh, and many others, the civilization of Easter Island. These are things which uh, we worry about, uh, and uh, they, they could uh, come up very fast at some point and put uh, strains on our political and social systems, which we're now able to tolerate and, and push them from the realm of uh, relatively sane policy making into uh, irrational policy making uh, by generating fear. Uh, Hobbes' second motive, uh, and the hatred uh, that often goes along with fear. And finally, uh, the vanity or symbolic competition, usually not a factor in elites today as opposed to uh, the Middle Ages or the uh, era of dynastic states uh, when this was very important in the uh, ballet of kings. Um, but a divided domestic political scene can generate extreme parties and extreme leaders especially in circumstances of scarcity and fear. 
politics is not about permanent solutions. Uh, peace can never be what Kant called permanent or perpetual peace. It, that's only an aspiration, not a reality. History has no direction. Problems are solved, fine. New problems emerge. The fate of nations is subject to contingency and fluctuation. Government is simply the skillful regulating of powerful forces to improve uh, the, sec the security, the liberty, and welfare of the governed, and more important, to fend off the risk, the perpetual risk of catastrophe. I hope uh, that the governments and people of both China and the United States can carry on their marriage uh, with uh, this in mind. Thank you.